Hey, it's Anthony from Absolutely. You can watch this side and ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new Arai DTX helmet available at Revzilla.com. This is the DTX from Arai, new for the summer of 2017. It sounds aggressive, it is aggressive, but I will tell you, I like what they've done here. This is an intermediate oval head shape helmet. This is the same fit that we typically see in a Rai Corsair X. And why that's important for me to lead the video with is because truly where this plays in the price range, which is in the $500 range, it means that now we have an Arai Signet X, which is going to be long oval, really long and narrow. We have an Arai Quantum X, which is going to be very, very round, which would be a much more earth-shaped head. And we now have the DTX, which is going to be intermediate oval, a little bit longer front to back, same as the Corsair X. And I'll tell you, if we most clearly compare this helmet it's more of a step forward from the Vector than it is to, as a baby brother to the Quantum. It really fits right in the middle because the Vector shape is gonna be a little bit more intermediate but more neutral. So the Vector really fits in between the intermediate shape, which this would be, and something like that Quantum X, which is much more round. So now that you have a sense of that, remember all of the helmets, except for the Corsair X I just went through, the Signet, the Quantum, the Vector, and now the DTX, all play in this $450 to $600 range. So again, if you're looking at Arai, which is really, in our opinion, one of the gold standard helmet manufacturers handmade in Japan, they're snell rated, they're typically light, they're typically quiet. Now you have an option that's not $800, that's gonna be that intermediate oval that has a bit more of a forward thinking design and feature standpoint. And that's gonna be that step up over something like the Vector. Now, if we look at the big changes and we look at really what stands out to us besides fit here on the new DTX, it's now a quieter helmet than the Vector. You still have that singular top vent on top. This is the new IC5 system, which is a more quiet configuration. Still flows a ton of air. In our opinion, does it flow as much air as the dual chimneys you'll see in that Quantum or the Signet? No, but again, it's rock solid. And this helmet, remember, it's just coming in over the $500 mark versus the $600 mark of the Quantum and the Signet. You still have a two-position chin vent, but now there's a replacement screw down there, which is really nice. They've made that change. The other thing that I really love when we think about this price point for this helmet, this is the first time we've seen them dip under the $600 $600 mark with the new VASV system. And that's really the shield mechanism, which does not come with a pin lock. If you step up into that Signet or Quantum, you get the pin lock max vision in the box. With this helmet, you're not getting the pin lock stock, but what you have is the new shield change mechanism and shield itself. Again, I'll show you how quick and easy that works. Again, I'm gonna show you in a few minutes when I break this down in detail, how that mechanism works. It's very, very simple. That pops on just like, if I go up all the way, there we go, just like that, very, very simple. And the other thing that you're gonna see that's a big change over that vector is going to be the EcoPure liner, which is a bit more hygienic and a bit more comfortable. Now, it is a Snell rated helmet. Arai makes Snell rated helmets. They will not compromise. And that ties in really nicely with the last and final major change. And that's going to be the fact that it's the new X-Static or X-Matrix design in this shell four shells, it's composite, but it's now the Super CLC that actually has peripheral belting. So it's a PB CLC helmet, which again has that belting go along the brow, carrying a further standard and further reinforcement for the Snell rating. Now, if we look at the helmet, again, graphics, solids. I like it for the track. I like it for everyday riding. I like it for long distance touring. Again, a is going to be a really balanced helmet. that's giving you the best of technology protection as well as comfort because the goal is to be neutral with your helmet, to not be thinking about it, have it fit appropriately. So let's dive back into fit. Remember, we talked about intermediate oval. That is my head shape. It's kind of the Goldilocks for the American market. So this helmet and the Corsair X are going to be the helmets that really fit a little bit longer front to back, right about the medium size or the medium strength of the bell curve for what we see typically in the US. They're not outlier round, they're not outlier narrow. Keep that in mind. Also remember that the comfort liner as well as the cheek pads have five millimeter removable tear-offs. So again, you can fine tune them around the temples and around the jawline. You can also get different size cheek pads within this helmet. So again, have a lot of options to fine tune the fit. Now keep in mind, use the size chart, we'll ship free over 39 bucks. And I'd love it if you click our logo, subscribe to us at RevZilla on our YouTube channel. Leave me your comments, request your feedback on the new DTX from Arai. Now, diving into the shell, working our way in. Three pounds, nine ounces, Snell rated. We've covered it. We've covered some of the ventilation scheme with the updates to the chin vent, which remember is two position, one to the shield, one to the face, which is really nice. And then you get into the chimney here, much more quiet, but it still sits on the top of the head. Does not flow as much air though, even through the 10 millimeter vent hole as it does on some of the higher end models that are gonna have the dual chimneys. And we've said that. 
So we move around to the back, you have a very similar configuration. Now, Arise yelled at us and they said, it's not a replacement for the vector, but this is a vector style vent. And this, the way this venting is set up really works in the upright as well as the three quarter tuck position. Again, very universally tuned. Notice you're active here, three position, open halfway and closed. Again, underneath this aerodynamic wing. And as you work your way down here too, you have two passive extractors too. So air is gonna come in through the front, through the brows, through the chimney. It's gonna circulate, come down and be extracted away via an area of low pressure. You also have your brow vents, which I love that not a lot of manufacturers are doing. And if we see that, halfway, all the way open. They vent actually to these scoops. These scoops channel this air to the temple, which is a hot spot and a pressure point where very hot, warm blood is going to go towards the outside of your skin. Again, that's why it's your temple. And what's gonna happen is they're gonna cool your temples, cooling the blood below the surface, and ultimately that's gonna help cool your total body. That is science, I'm dropping it on you today. Now, if we look at the rest of the configuration for this outer shell, again, it has the standards of awry. And what that means is they typically go for a sphere. They find it to be very efficient from an energy management standpoint, very easy to balance. And again, that sphere allows you to not have areas that are going to catch if you go down. They don't want anything interfering with the ground that might create a snag or introduce any kind of a jarring motion when you do hit the ground. The other thing you keep in mind is this hyper ridge, something they developed years and years ago. It still stays true. This hyper ridge, if you introduce a shock to the top of the helmet, it's meant to catch that shock and almost bounce it back versus transferring it from the neck roll and from the edge of the helmet to something like your collarbone or your body. Again, a helmet is an energy management system trying to disperse the total energy over the distance of the helmet through the EPS, not to your head. It's trying to slow down the forces of impact, making it to your body. Now, if we look at the shield change mechanism, we're going to go for it now. Before I get into it, notice big gasket, which is going to be a weatherproof gasket. They've done a nice job of bringing that around. It doesn't really have a spring-mounted um, locking in. It doesn't pull towards you as you go down like some other manufacturers, but the gasket is a nice gasket. Arise been doing this a long time. They've gotten that right many moons ago. The other thing on this helmet that I don't necessarily love, Buzzsaw and I agree on this, is that this mechanism for locking, the old version worked pretty well, and they've gone this way and they yelled at us. They said it doesn't go that way, even though we find that it's easier to kind of initially pop it that way at some point. Easier to do when you have it on your head. There's your lock, and you're gonna just kind of push up. And notice when you go up too, you have these hard plastic TPUs that are up here that allow the helmet to stay tight within the helmet and rotate back, keeping it close and compact. Now, let's go for the VASV change. I will tell you this. Previous versions of, of Arai, we saw the VASV system come out with the new Corsair X. The previous side pod system totally sucked. It did, it was, it was on the market forever. Arai made a super premium helmet, but many moons ago, some of their competitors just made much easier, faster shield change mechanism that didn't compromise. Arai is now caught up, they've made this very simple. And they like to cover things. The side pods are pretty sweet, but again, it's one more thing to deal with. So now, you put your fingers there, you pop it just like that. That does two things. First thing is it ejects the side pods, it hangs down, know that Notice that it is tether. The second thing is it pops this little brass element out of its track. So this helmet is effectively off now. So very, very simple to remove. Again, this is your VASV shield, takes that max vision pin locks. If you put it on there, gives you that full band. And remember, this is gonna be UVA and UV proof, UVB proof. It's about a two to three millimeter face shield polycarb, pretty indestructible. Now, if I want to put it back on, it happens very, very quickly. What I do is I go and I align my brass nugget up with the red dot, and I lock it in easier in the upright position here. What we're going to do is we're going to get it down there. It snaps right in, and then all you do is you bring it up, and you put it down. That's it. You're done. That simple. Now, I will tell you, the previous versions, everything from a ride Corsair all the way up to the Corsair 5, I would never attempt that in the video because it was really difficult to do and you just see me fumbling through it, but it was what we called them out on. And ultimately they made a much more user-friendly, less fickle helmet. Because even in the early days, 10 years ago when we started RevZilla, ultimately we had a lot of high end eye helmets that would come back because people would break their helmet trying to do that switch. Now, if I open it like that, that's what I need to do to reinstall my side pod. Notice it slides top to bottom, pops back in that simply, I'm done. Very, very simple, very, very quick, very, very easy. And I promise I didn't do that 10 times before we shot this video. It's very much that simple. You can do it on your own. You can add their dark smoke shield. Ultimately, 
Arai's not going to do helmets with drop-down sun visors because it, com it, it compromises the Snell rating. Now, if I grab my little donut over here, let's put it on its side, bring it back to the front, let's talk through the guts. You're not getting a removable chin spoiler. Again, you'd have to step up to get that in some of the higher-end helmets. Again, keep that in mind. That's a trade-off because you're coming in south of the $600 mark. You also don't have an emergency cheek pad removal system. As you go up in the Orion line, you get that. I wish they would have put that on this helmet because, again, investing north of the $500 mark, if you're out cold, you're going to take this to the track potentially. You need the ability for an EMT to kind of slide those cheek pads out so they can just slide it off the top of your head. Again, that's one of the trade-offs you're making. The last thing here is the neck roll itself is non-removable. So this is a stationary neck roll, even though, the, even though the cheek pads as well as the comfort liner are fully removable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to deconstruct here, and you're going to see how this all works its way out. So first, I'm going to take my cheek pads out. I'm going to reach in. Less snaps more hooks and loops, they stay in via tension. There is my 25 millimeter cheek pad that's gonna come stock on this helmet. Notice the eco pure lining, notice the facial contour. And if I remove this, you're gonna see the top layer here is already laser cut. You can remove up to five millimeters. You can also, I believe, typically these are scored, you can remove this area around the ear if you wanna create a little bit more space to install your Bluetooth communication unit. So again, Arise pretty good at allowing you to configure their helmets, even though they're probably annoyed when they think about the fact that you might hang a communication device off the side of the helmet and ultimately throw off some of the aerodynamic profile. The other side's just as easy, you just kind of pull it out. Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty simple. It's a hook right behind the FCS here, their facial contour system. Again, multiple densities meant to stay in place. Again, when you get a new awry, typically it's gonna push your cheeks in. You're gonna get that feeling. It breaks in about 10% over time. You want that. You want everything to be snug. Now, when I come back into the helmet, let me pull these bad boys out. Come back into the helmet, we'll pull the comfort liner out. Typically four snaps with an awry, yes. They don't typically attach the front of the helmet to the brow via plastic. What they'll do is these snaps, and over time, they've gotten pretty good at making sure you don't get the pressure points. It'd be interesting to see over time if Arai migrates to a more brow connectivity in the front because you never really feel them underneath the occipital ridge of your head in the back. Now, along the side here, you are going to have these elements that are sticky that can be teared off and fine-tuned. You get about 10 millimeters there. And you'll notice it's a little bit more of a simple construction in their comfort liner here from Arai in the, comfort, in, in the full configuration of the liner. Again, trying to use flat lock stitching where they can, try to do a minimization of seams, big cutouts to promote air flow. And again, this is the new Eco Pure liner. And notice this area with a very large gauge mesh down here towards the bottom, this air mesh. Again, this is an area where sweat's going to pull on your head and they want better ventilation there. They want better wicking. Again, very simple to clean. Pull it out, run it under a few minutes of water, let it air dry on the sink. Um, these are very durable. They'll hold up pretty well over time. Now, if we open up the helmet itself, one of the things you're going to notice is it's a very simple interior construction. We do see other manufacturers that will big, build big ridges to promote airflow into their EPS liners, which the inside of this helmet's really the true energy management system beside the shell. It's a multi-density EP, EPS phone. Again, different stages of the impact are meant to be slowed. So again, make that determination if you've worn both. We find that this helmet vents quite well, and as you even go up the food chain from Arai, you don't see those channels come into place. From a safety perspective, that is just something they choose not to do. And you see that horseshoe configuration, which you do have three active 10 millimeter vent holes along the back side of this helmet. And notice too, you do have your active vents down here along the back. There are your passive vents where you're going to have that warm, moist air inside and then you have that vacuum behind the helmet pulling and ejecting air out. And notice even the ventilation down here, the air is gonna come down the Mohawk, circulate across the bottom, and it's going to eject out the back side of the helmet. So all in, if I look at this helmet, the things I absolutely love about it, I love the fact that it's under the $600 mark. I love the fact that it's intermediate oval under the $600 mark. I love the fact that you're going to get a step forward in functionality over the Arai Vector, which even though Arai is telling me that this is not going to be the replace, I see too many similarities for both of them to live in the mix for the next two to three years. My hunch would be this would be the Vector replacement. What I'd like to see them change is charge another 50 bucks if you have to, give the pin lock, put it in the box. Allow somebody to really have this helmet be more toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Quantum X and the Signet X. That way you have three very similar helmets that are high-end, sport, sport touring, touring, commuting, do-it-all helmets universally configured that have a similar scheme. Again, and then allow somebody to make that leap into something like the Corsair X if they just want to race thoroughbred. That would be my gripe if I had any, but ultimately it's nice to see them redo essentially the intermediate oval head shape that's been missing 
again, in the mid range for a ride, which is still gonna be that five to $600 range. The next step in your journey is click the info button, your desktop, your mobile device. Visit the product detail page at RevZilla.com, read other rider reviews, you shouldn't just take my word for it. As always, we'll ship for free over 39 bucks. If you wanna to talk to a gear geek, see us at RevZilla.com or 877-792-9455. Thanks for watching our detailed breakdown. Remember, subscribe to us at RevZilla on our YouTube channel, stay updated with our opinion, latest and greatest in the motor universe. I'm Anthony, we'll see you next time.